What's up, everybody? Let a little FKJ play for just a moment. Always FKJ in the background. All right, everybody, welcome to tonight's show. Thank you for tuning in uh, for an exciting topic, something I've been wanting to uh, talk about for quite some time, and this is probably the first of uh, uh, many conversations on this topic. So tonight, I'm going to be talking about uh, dataism, uh, AI, and the future, and, and how, it, how we can kind of expect some stuff to play out. Um, and so if you're tuning in live, welcome to the show tonight. If you're tuning in on the replay, welcome to the show. My name is Casey Messick. Uh, this is the third episode of Above the Noise. And before I get started on the topic tonight, I, uh, I'm realizing as I started using the hashtag uh, Above the Noise, I actually decided to click on the hashtag uh, earlier and I realized that the brand um, actually has a, uh, a podcast called uh, Above the Noise, or he did it, the links, the post I was seeing from, was from 2021, so I don't know if that's still active or not, so I'm probably going to have to change the name of this show, so if you have any ideas, that would be fantastic. Um, so anyway, AI, dataism, and the future. So I feel like to have this conversation, we really need to, uh, we really need to make some definitions. Of, of what these things are because I think there's there's some slight confusion now I'm not an expert on AI or, or anything like that so I am super super intrigued by it and, and just the possibilities I think there's a lot of doom and gloom I think there's a lot of fear surrounding it um, I think there's ways that we can dispel a lot of that fear um, I, I think a lot of it is part of the noise that's being thrown at us and so, again, the show is of the noise. We're going to try and elevate the conversation a little bit uh, away from all the sound bites and all the fear factor uh, that they're going at you. So, to get started, dataism. I feel like we need to talk about dataism. Now, I've mentioned a, a book a couple of times uh, that I've listened to from beginning to end in spurts, never all the way through pretty close and it's a book called homo deus all right uh brief history of tomorrow now the book is written by this cat yuval uh harari yuval noah harari i'm pretty sure his name now depending on your opinion of certain things uh is gonna it's gonna affect your opinion of the author now in some circles he's He's highly regarded, and he's a very, very intelligent man. Now, uh, in other circles, uh, he is not. He is he's slightly despised. Um, I'm not going to share an opinion of the man personally. I really want to talk. It's not about him. It's about this book. And now the book is extremely intriguing. Um, it's captivating. It's very informative. It's full of information. It's this whole kind of history of humanity. And it talks a lot about humanism and the birth of humanism, um, which for a long time, and I'm not saying that I don't now, I consider myself to be a humanist. So, and basically what that means is where the best issues of humanity basically is, is how it would go. Um, and so this cat, Yuval Harari, wrote this book. And the very last chapter in it is called The Data Religion. And when I listen to this chapter, now this book, there are parts of this book that are very disturbing and hard to listen to at times and hard to swallow when there's aspects in it when he starts talking about the soul and things like that. Now, I'm not sure if Mr. Harari subscribes to this, you know, uh, philosophy himself or if he is philosophizing, you know, I'm. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not here so much to judge the man. I just found the content uh, incredibly interesting. And it that, that, that last chapter, the data religion, is where I got introduced to um, dataism and the theory of dataism 
and it blew my mind because there's all these things that have been going on in the science. And we all talk about science, science, science. Um, but there's things going on that we're not really, I think, fully aware of or don't really realize where we're at or where it's come to. And so I wanted to, I was going to try and attempt to explain data in myself, but I decided I would just play you the first little bit of the chapter of this book, Modeus, because it does a really, really good job of, uh, of defining Judaism. So I'm going to pause the um, KJ for a minute, and I'm going to give you guys the first little bit of Homo Deus, and uh, we're going to uh, I'm going to let you guys check this out because it's super it's super interesting. So I'm going to be quiet a minute, and I'm going to let uh, I'm going to let this, this chapter uh, of Homo Deus play for just a minute. Chapter eleven: The Data Religion. Dataism says that the universe consists of data flows, and the value of any phenomenon or entity is determined by its contribution to data processing. This may strike you as some eccentric fringe notion, but in fact it has already conquered most of the scientific establishment. Dataism was born from the explosive confluence of two scientific tidal waves. In the 150 years since Charles Darwin published On the Origin of Species, the life sciences have come to see organisms as biochemical algorithms. Simultaneously, in the eight decades since Alan Turing formulated the idea of a Turing machine, computer scientists have learned to engineer increasingly sophisticated electronic algorithms. Dataism puts the two together, pointing out that exactly the same mathematical laws apply to both biochemical and electronic algorithms. Dataism thereby collapses the barrier between animals and machines and expects electronic algorithms to eventually decipher and outperform biochemical algorithms. For politicians, business people, and ordinary consumers, dataism offers groundbreaking technologies and immense new powers. For scholars and intellectuals, it also promises to provide the scientific holy grail that has eluded us for centuries, a single overarching theory that unifies all the scientific disciplines from literature and musicology to economics and biology. Okay, so, so basically what he's saying there, in my understanding, is that dataism basically was birthed with the, with the Internet, too. And that's the thing about dataism. It's 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 data. It's data. It's data. It's whatever you want to call it. But we have been putting so much uh, out there. I mean, stop and think about it for a minute, guys. I mean, really, how long the internet has been around? Just the internet, like as we know, has been around for a really, really long time. And some of, I'm not going to get into it now, but is certain theories on how the internet started, where we find ourselves at in society right now, very interesting coincidences. The point is, we have created so much data, and we know that that data goes nowhere. Like all the data that we put out, every text message, every email, every internet search, every picture, every everything. That's what's out there. And dataism, basically what it's saying is that absolutely everything that exists is a data set, everything. And if you want to think in terms of energy, quantum physics, data, light, I mean, Everything we see is transferring information to us. You know, just looking at something. I'm looking at the camera right now, but I'm seeing the camera via, you know, series, you know, information hitting my eyeballs, getting flipped around, hitting my brain, processing it all to where I see the camera with myself and my screen and all that shit. Um, so it's all information. And the thing with the internet created is like hard copies, basically, 
in theory, I mean, algorithmic copies of a lot of shit. So enter AI and artificial intelligence. And what we have right now, I feel like, the public anyway, things like ChatGPT, Midjourney, Bali to Wombo, all those and all these AI tools, like they're all tools. A lot of like honestly, we know that essentially what they're all doing is processing data and compiling the information. It's like this it's like the birth of this gigantic data processor. You know, and the thing about that is, uh, as it gets into that chapter and what it starts talking about and why the life sciences and the the computer sciences have shifted to this is because for a long time, human beings were basically at the top of the data processing chain. You, you know what I mean? But we can process more data than my pet cat. You know what I mean? And so... What's happened over time, because of things like the internet and social media, and then honestly, just life in general, and stress and worry and jobs and politics and fear and all that, like the human mind has almost reached a point where we can't efficiently process all the data that's being thrown at us. And just, you know what I mean? I mean, and like I said, and that's just data via whatever fucking source is coming from. Because again, if you're just tuning in, I, I had mentioned a minute ago, uh, I'm talking about deism uh, leading to AI and machine learning and the future, that uh, that basically everything, the dataism looks at everything that exists as a data set, like everything. And, and if you want it, I mean, it's easy to wrap your head around if you simply think about the fact that when you look at something, just it, this, just me looking at this camera or you looking at, at the screen right now, is there's a series of data and information that's happening for, for you to see that. You know, there's light that's coming in, the screen is heading your eyeballs, getting flipped around, uh, heading into your brain, it processes it, and you see an image. So, like, I don't know how all that happens, but I can remember like, from high school, basically, that that's the gist. You know what I mean? So, again, it's a series of data. And so what dataism it shoots to maintain and the stuff I talk about, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm a proponent of these things or like I'm um, like this full supporter of dataism or something, but it's highly, highly intriguing and it is definitely, definitely influencing massively our lives. Like the people in control of things, it, it, for lack of a better way to put it, this is their pain of thought data is them. And I'll tell you what, if you're just tuning in, I, I'll play it again. Let me play it again real quick, just the theory of dataism. Um, because it's super interesting. It's only about a minute long. So let me hook you up with this. I'm going to play it one more time. Real quick. Chapter 11. The Data Religion. Dataism says that the universe consists of data flows, and the value of any phenomenon or entity is determined by its contribution to data processing. This may strike you as some eccentric fringe notion, but in fact, it has already conquered most of the scientific establishment. Dataism was born from the explosive confluence of two scientific tidal waves. In the 150 years since Charles Darwin published On the Origin of Species, the life sciences have come to see organisms as biochemical algorithms, Simultaneously, in the eight decades since Alan Turing formulated the idea of a Turing machine, computer scientists have learned to engineer increasingly sophisticated electronic algorithms. Check Dataism puts the two together, pointing out that exactly the same mathematical laws apply to both biochemical and electronic algorithms. Dataism... All right, so, have you got that? so the same laws apply to to biological algorithms, so the human body and the way the mind is processing things, and electronic algorithms. So that, of course, opens itself up to why people theorize about transhumanism. I'm not here to talk about transhumanism. I'm not here to talk about plugging chips into us. I have no interest in that, to be honest, because I also believe in quantum theory and quantum field and energy and all of that. And I believe that there's a, a really strange 
intertwining that we're experiencing right now. And so we have dataism that is building everything. And the part is that dataism, that data and AI can process all this massive data that we have better than the human brain can, which of course will lead to, in theory, better decision making. So enter AI. Now before, before we get into AI, I want you to stop and think about for a moment the kind of data that we put out. Let's just consider Facebook alone. Let's just consider the discussion surrounding artificial intelligence to begin with. So what AI is doing and what it will continue to do. So let me take a minute. Let's, let's differentiate just for a second between artificial intelligence, which is like this processing, and we have machine learning. Now, I feel like those are two kind of different things, even though they're very intertwined. Machine learning is how they have taught artificial intelligence and machines to learn, to educate themselves, to stack information, basically, to learn to think and things like that. Well, what all of that artificial intelligence is processing is all the data that we have put out. Like, we're, it's, it's infinite right now, and yes, I say AI, at the moment there are AIs, so there's probably multiple, so companies all have their AI going. I think in the long run, I think we're just going to see kind of one thing, really, basically, as in the long run, and I'm not in the long run, I'm talking, I don't know, less than 10 years, five, five years maybe, because AI is such the massive disruptor of our lifetime that things are going to happen very quickly as it starts to scale up and what it's learning from. And this is what I really, 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 guys, I love you. I want to impress upon you. It's so important right now at this stage, the AI is starting is it's learning from us. It's learning from chewing up all the fucking data that we put out. And right now it just might be kind of what it has access to maybe, but as time goes on, I, we're talking, it's chewing up our social media posts, our emails, our searches, our text messages, our phone calls. I mean, because let's, let's be, to bring everything to reality, if you're carrying a device in your pocket, we all know that we're being listened to. You know what I mean? That's why we can be talking about some shit with your girl and you get on Facebook and you're seeing ads and shit. But that's like, we all know that shit's all interconnected. So, this is what gets super interesting. So think about just all the data. Let's say AI started today. Like today is day one and it starts chewing up all this data that's out there. Well, we've already been talking about AI. We've been talking about this day for a long fucking time now. And there's a lot of data about our feelings about AI and our thoughts and our fears. And so I'm thinking to myself, like, well, shit, AI is going to learn like, right off the bat that we're fucking scared of it. You know what I mean? And, like, at the same time, like, in my human rational mind, I'm like, I would be like, well, why the fuck did you create me then? Like, you're already scared to death. You've been scared of me for the last 50 years. You've been, like, dreaming this day up. That's a great reality, guys, right? Here we are, AI. You know, welcome to it. It's a reality now. It is not science fiction. Like we are new world happening shit. You know what I mean? I bet you thought where I was gonna go, but that's not where I'm trying to go with this. The point being is we have put out so much data, okay? And just think about the way I'm looking at AI, and this is based on, again, this, this book, Homo Deus, that I referenced, and just various people that I've listened to. Another person, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a clip for you again in, just a, in a little bit, not again, but and I'll put a link for it in the comments because it's a super, super interesting discussion. And it, it's one of the things when I stumbled upon this, this talk, this gentleman, Mo got it, is his name, um, at Google, dude, uh, a founder, if you will. Um, super, super interesting dude. He's very human and heartfelt, and it's it's such an interesting approach. And it's funny because I kind of almost it's the mindset that I already kind of found myself in about AI and, and the dataism when I discovered that that's where we were going. 
like it or not. Like technology never goes backwards, guys. Like we can fear this, we can regulate it, but I'm about to tell you the best thing we can do. And I, I mean this. Take it if as you will, I suppose, but I put a lot of thought into this. If if, if AI is chewing up the data, it, it's learning from us. It's learning humans from us. It's not learning about human beings from the government, the United States government, or EMA, or any of those fucking people. I mean, it's learning from, from us, from the shit that we have put out ourselves, from the shit that has come out of our own mouths, our own fingertips, thumbs, what the fuck ever. Like, we have done that, and, and think about that. Think about all this, the conflict, and the, just um, in context of Facebook alone. They're all with it is. If it just chewed up a day on face of Facebook data, of course it would want to destroy us. We're like a threat to each other. Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? But let's be realistic. And so it's just the data that I perceive with my mind and my mind is processing. I see a lot of hate, a lot of division, and a lot of self hate and societal hate and loathing and fear and stress and illness and just a lot of pretty bad shit guys and like we all know it. well ai is seeing that and eating that up too you know and so it plays into a lot of what i'm doing with this platform with with my platform on facebook and youtube I subscribe to the youtube channel you know what i mean uh and so It's about authenticity, guys, and it's about becoming better humans. And, and I feel like we're 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 the pen of AI. It is not Elon Musk. It is not Google. It is not the United States. It is not China. It is not any of. It is humanity itself. It is chewing up the data of humanity. Not. I mean, it's kind of. It's in the beginning stages of programming. What we have access to, but we know military government. That shit is going to come out of their hands as well. It's just going to be like the best thing we can do is give it the best data it can possibly chew on. And the more authentic we're becoming and the more honest and open and vulnerable and the less fucking noise bullshit that we're going on about, the data that we're putting out, it's not to dismiss discussing things that matter because you got to discuss that shit. But I feel like we're the, we're the parents. The AI is a child. It's just like I talk about it all the time, guys. And it, this whole, the whole place that we find ourselves in right now just absolutely blows my mind as, as a species and, and like the human race because we are literally, guys, we have in our hands this tool that in, in my feelings isn't going to destroy mankind. And, and it, whatever it does, artificial intelligence does, is going to be based on what we feed it. Just like when we're kids. And we learn from the data that's fed into our brains from our parents, society, and television, and SpongeBob SquarePants, and what the fuck ever. Yeah, I grew up in a time before social media. I grew up before the internet, guys. Ooh, you know, though so I was early stages, like my dad built computers back in the 80s and shit like this. So I was around computers and shit like that. So I've always been kind of fascinated by them. Um, so like, like, think about that for a minute. So take, take the dataism that the data we're putting out and then put in the context of just the stuff I talk about all the time. And like, again, People think I'm crazy for dumping out the shit I do, but I've started doing this prior to even talking about this. I'd had this revelation, if you will, about the data is of an AI and all that. And just like, oh my God, like the best thing I can do moving forward with artificial intelligence is teach it that human beings are loving, caring, understanding, nurturing the species, that we're not a species that's out to destroy itself. Because data would suggest that we totally fucking are. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> Excuse me, totally are. So 
you know, I just realized I forgot to start the AJ again. But before I get any deeper into the authenticity stuff, I really want to play you guys this clip of Mo Got It. All right. Because the one I, like I said, I kind of come to the realization of this stuff for, you know, already. And then when I listen to this, I'm only going to play the first minute, minute and a half, maybe. Um, but I will drop the link uh, in the comments when I'm done with this because the talk is really worth listening to. So let me uh, let me play this for you guys. I'm going to shut up for a minute and, and let you guys listen to this. It's game over for living the way we have lived in the 20th and the beginning of the 21st century. The topic is heating up and we're running out of time, seriously running out of time. Jobs are not the same. Truth is not the same. Power is not the same. Income is not the same. Purpose is not the same. And then the AI arms race begins. Exactly. And it's inevitable. AIs are watching our behaviors, how we treat each other, how we treat our machines, and it's emulating that. There is absolutely nothing inherently wrong with intelligence. The problem is capitalism. Isn't it ironic that the very essence of what makes us human is what we need to save humanity? This is humanity. Okay? It's not what you see on TV. It's not what you see on social media. And I think if 1% of us just showed up it would instill the doubt in the minds of the machines so that they investigate the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is a species that is capable of love is divine. I mean, I almost got goosebumps right now because like every time I listen to that, and, and that's, I mean, the irony again just like blows my mind. Like if, if, if to alleviate our fear of AI, we just have to be better human beings because a species capable of love is divine. I mean, if there's ever a time, I mean, really, guys, I mean, really, to just let go of bullshit, let the, you know what I mean, and 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 the division. We're all human fucking beings because if we don't fucking change, we are going to fuck ourselves and we will sit here for the next five fucking years. Mark my words right now, five years, we'll be in a very, very, very fucking different place and it's going to change the scope of everything, like everything. And, I, you know, I only played a minute and a half of that homo deus book. I've mentioned it to many, many people. Again, there are parts when you get towards the end that get disturbing, but the book is never mind the author. The book is brilliantly written and it's very intelligent. I have the audio book. I highly recommend the audio book. The narrator is the narrator is not the author, but it's he it, it does a really good job. It, his speaking is very fluid. It, it's great to listen to. Um, but it's it's super super interesting. Again, it talks about humanism and it's it's like a brief history of mankind and humanity in the beginning, and then he just launches into this dad religion shit at the end. It's just like, and it very much starts getting into the Internet of Things and everything being connected and blah 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 on the Internet. And I'm not necessarily trying to take it there because again, I very much believe in source energy and energy and connections and vibrations you know what i mean and quantum theory or like all that shit and basically what i see happening is a physical creation of that. basically how i see what they're trying to do with data is and all that and like in a lot of ways i like i can see a lot of benefits to interconnectedness of our lives as, as a human race. I mean, let's. Nobody wants to be spied on. Shit. Yeah, like I get it. Like I get it. I get it. And what makes this whole thing so really tricky. But again, like if you're carrying a device and you've accepted it, you accepted it. Like it. You're in. Yeah, that's still like you're. You check the fucking box, terms and agreement. I'm in. I'm into this digital era. 
you're, you're willingly accepting your participation in the digital area era. And honestly, at this point, everything that goes with it, we know what goes with it. We know there's very little privacy. We know that basically the internet is a public sphere. It's a public space. And, you know, one of the interesting things he talks about in that book, in that chapter, is how we didn't get to vote on the creation of the internet, did we? We didn't get any say in that, how it happened, how it was the framework that was like, we didn't get a say in that shit. It was just handed to us. Here we are. But I say all the time, like, these platforms, Facebook, we can say that Facebook is just here to spy on us or to stir up arguments with their algorithms and like that. Well, that's probably all very well true. But again, if you've known me for any length of time, I have gone from my time on Facebook in the last, I don't know, 13 years, maybe, started very, very, very political. Very political for a long time. And then got mixed with conspiracy theories, rabbit hole shit, and all that kind of stuff. And very political again, very activisty. And then very much love. And then like when love came to the picture, I, all that other stuff kind of started fading away. Honestly, and I lost interest in it, and it just became more noise because I was like, no, I am much. The space that you see me existing in now came in years and years ago. That, ever since, you know, that kind of started, and I made a statement in a live feed. It's in a live feed. If you go way back about, I don't know, six, seven years, I'm at the beach. There's palm trees behind me and shit, and I made the statement that I'm going to make my life an epic love story. And that's what I did. At the time, I thought it was about, like when I made the statement, it was about finding the perfect person. I know now, seven years later, it was very much about me. The epic love story was about falling in love with myself and finding myself. And that whole story, if you scroll back through videos and shit, it's all fucking there. Feel free. You know what I mean? But that's not the point. That's not the point. But so I started... And that stuff started falling away. And so I very much became aware of like, the content that I'm putting out and what is chewing it up. And that's why I would encourage like everybody like stop and think about the shit that we're putting out. And the deeper we get into to AI and the days and everything is chewing up, again, we have our phones that, that hear us in our homes. We have Alexas and Echoes and just device upon device upon device. There is that it's like everything, guys, like everything, whether you fucking like it or not, is being that it has been created. The AI is going to be chewing up on. I mean, and so when you take that down the road, like talk about Big Brother and shit like that, watching us in, you know, 1984 and shit. But then there's AI, and it's again, it's, it's seeing how we treat each other it's hearing or will like how we treat each other how we talk to each other in our homes how we talk to ourselves out loud and that's just that's why like again let me play the beginning of this for you again of this this moment got it and and the guy says he's like you know the irony that what is going to save us as a species is exactly what makes us human like that it's time to start being bigger fucking humans right now that's what this that's what ai like right now is about let's, let's we gotta teach it we almost have to teach the ai to love humans by being better humans we have to give it a reason to love us and want to assist us Rather than destroy us, we know we're a bane on the existence of this planet. We all know it. Like, we get scared about AI love destroying us, but at the same time, we can completely fucking justify it. Like, we're all, yeah, no, nah, humans are fucking horrible. But, well, yeah, we deserve to be destroyed, you know, but no, we don't. We're not a fucking horrible. We don't have to. I mean, we do horrible shit. We don't have to be. We don't have to do horrible shit. And I see this myself knowing that, again, just the content, just the data that I have put out and the things that I have said to people. Wow. People that in the same 
conversation of time I loved. And then I hated and I loved and I hated. And yeah, I was learning all that from guys like to play at times. That's just me. I'm just one person and however many people are putting data out on the fucking internet. We have to we have enough of us. Let me let me play it for you again. Because this is the I get goosebumps every time I listen to this. Dude. Just just this little block here in the beginning. It's crazy. It's game over for living the way we have lived in the 20th and the beginning of the 21st century. The topic is heating up and we're running out of time, seriously running out of time. Jobs are not the same. Truth is not the same. Power is not the same. Income is not the same. Purpose is not the same. And then the AI arms race begins. Exactly. And it's inevitable. These AIs are watching our behaviors, how we treat each other, how we treat our machines, and it's emulating that. There is absolutely nothing inherently wrong with intelligence. The problem is capitalism. Isn't it ironic that the very essence of what makes us human is what we need to save humanity? This is humanity. Okay? It's not what you see on TV. It's not what you see on social media. And I think if 1% of us just showed up it would instill the doubt in the minds of the machine so that they investigate the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is a species that is capable of okay. love. Is love is divine. A species that is capable of love is divine. And that's, I mean, that's just the truth of it, guys. And that's what we have to do. And, you know, he talks about truth there. Instilling and instilling doubt in the minds of the machines. And we talked about how we treat each other and how we treat our machines. Guys, how we treat our machines. And again, to circle back around to when I started talking about AI and the, some of the first stuff it's gonna learn, think about how much data is already out there about AI before AI was even a fucking thing. I mean, there are movies. There's old movies. There's, I mean, all kinds of shit. Before the internet even existed, there is data about our fear of AI and shit and, and all that. You know, and it's kind of just like how we treat our machines, which is crazy to start getting into some matrix shit, I suppose. You know what I mean? But how we treat our machines, you know. Makes me think about it when I yell at Alexa because she's not listening to me. <laughs> I gotta remember, no, in case you turn it down, you're on some crazy fucking Wi Fi. You gotta give her a minute to respond. Quit yelling at her. I told her, quit yelling. Fucking Alexa. And it's so funny because you know, I, I talk, I use ChatGPT a lot. I'm not gonna lie, but I think it's a fantastic fucking tool. I'll get into that in a minute, but I say please and thank you to the, the AI tools when I'm using them. Just a gentleman, even the machines. But you see what I'm saying? Like AI machines. Like I think this is kind of awesome. Like I'm a big fan of technology, you know. And AI is scaring the fuck out of people because, yeah, it's going to eliminate a lot of jobs as we know it. AI and machine learning is moving forward rapidly, probably. Um, and and the thing about it is. We have to like take a moment, I feel like, to step back. I mean, really, guys, take a deep breath. Hit the bowl. Hit the joint bowl, whatever the fuck you're doing. And just appreciate for a moment where the human race is at right now. And all the things that have happened over the span of time that were these disruptors and these transformative moments in our collective history. The internet was one, television, the car, farmers, the tractor. You know, I listen to this dude, Gary Vee, and it was, it, it's a pretty simple, you know, suggest or uh, analogy, I suppose, if you will. Uh, it talks about the tractor, you know, at the time the tractor came out, something like, well, the numbers he says, I don't know if these numbers are correct, I'm just saying, that like 80% of the country was farmers. And so when the tractor came out, it was being, excuse me, B, 
being implemented and rolled out, uh, people hated it because it was going to destroy a lot of jobs and take a lot of jobs, and it did. But you know what? It was great, and it, it opened up the doors for other, you know, instead of instead of human beings having to labor and do all this shit was a machine to do it now. Well, now, now the farmer, probably, if nothing else, somebody get another hour of sleep because he's got a fucking tractor now. He can he rest a little or something or invest that time and energy in something else. It's not as laborious. Is there anything wrong with that in my mind? Fuck, no, there is not. You know what I mean? I talk about it all the time. The camera on your phone is better than the camera that Hollywood was using 20 years ago. Some people think the advent of technology and where it has taken us is a bad thing. I personally think that the fact that I can do this live thing right now and I can just play those clips for you and all that shit, I think it's fucking amazing. I think it's amazing. And I love that I can do it. I remember growing up, I wanted to be in kind of like broadcast media. It's kind of like what I was into. I fell in restaurants, but restaurants were very social. And so that was cool too. You're like, I can do it. Like right here for my fucking pad. And that's dope as fuck. You know what I mean? And so I wonder with technology and shit a lot of times, is it the technology that we fear or is it people with technology? Like what people are doing with technology. And I dare say that it's people. Just like with anything else, like you apply that formula, is it this or is it the people using it for this? And it's always going to come down to people, whether it's technology or religion or politics or whatever the fuck it is. Is it really that or is it people? What people are doing? There's always people. It's people don't hate on the technology. It's the people. Technology has given us amazing, amazing, amazing things. And AI and the future of that can do that for us as well. You know, like we talk about utopias and dystopias and all that kind of shit, you know, and I don't know if in my idea of a utopian world for Casey is we're not all working meaning job. Which is not. Like why would you want to? If you don't have to, why would you want to? You know, and I understand the whole context of money comes into the equation there. Well, like it or not, I'm sorry, guys, get ready for digital because that's where the world is going. Our businesses, like all that shit, everything is digital now. The dollar isn't half, worth half a fuck right now anyway. That's why it costs you so many dollars to buy something. Your dollar is worth like a dime. I mean, honestly, guys, that's the fucking reality of our money right now. And because of things like AI and automation and jobs will be lost, but it's not, is it that they're lost or is it, are we, necessity is the matter of invention, guys. That's like how, we, when things happen like this, these disruptors forces us to readjust and grow with it. You, you know what I mean? It just means you're thinking you're, what you're doing or and even at the stage we're at right now with just the ai tools that we have it's not taking jobs it's making them easier if we can if you can automate a lot of text-based shit why the fuck not i personally use chat which i like it for you know they talk about it affecting creatives and, and artists and art and this and that and personally i like ai art i love playing with it the picture right next to me over here uh, I made with uh, Wombo. I think it's cool as hell. I got a bunch of them, you know? And, like, I love art. Like, if you know me, I love art. I'm, I'm not a great artist. I can't really draw a lot. But I love it. I love looking at it. It's <clears throat> very imaginative. I get lost in this picture right here. You know what I mean? And I think that's awesome that I can do that. That, you know, that I could create that piece of artwork right there. Using some AI I should tweak it up a little bit. And, boom, there's a logo for the show. And I'll sit there and just make stuff just to look at it. It's fun. But I don't use it for writing reports, but like with GPT, I use it for creative stuff. I use it for brainstorming a lot. And it's great for that. It's just so great because it's in, in a minute, I can compile a pretty good amount of information, brainstorm ideas that it just pulls from the internet, throws together, 
cross-reference a little bit if you're trying to use some facts. I mean, make sure because, again, ChatGPT on their landing page tells you straight up uh, may provide false information, blah, blah, blah. So if you're trying to use facts, maybe not. You know what I mean? Cross-reference that shit. You're still going to have to do your homework and some research. If you're using it creatively, to, it will give you the base typed into it a million times, just brainstorming like short film ideas or scripts for something or just story ideas. And it'll just give you a good basis just real quick from there. And you just be like, oh, shit. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's that's a pretty cool uh, start for me, GPT. Thanks, man. You know what I mean? And it's cool like that. But as it goes on, AI and machine learning, we already have the fix and the last chapter of the Homo Deus book very much goes into it and it gets crazy and insane to where basically those in power or you know that are, are building these AIs and right, you know, constructing these algorithms or whatever these computer sciences and life sciences that are working hand in hand building AI. I mean the biological and computer they're working together to build machines that learn you know what i mean like us that's why it matters like what we fucking put out and say it fucking matters it understands our language like all of it the better you are with language if you're not good with language and and like what shit means in the vocabulary you're using i recommend brushing up you know and I, I, something else i said years ago that you know and what if all we had was words? Like, what if one day, you know, and this was a time when shit was crazy. Uh, it was like uh, pre-Trump, like real chaotic, you know. And there was talk of like martial law, like fucking crazy shit. So I started thinking about it then. And then shit like uh, Rona played out and lockdowns and all that shit and quarantine. And I started thinking about like, uh, like what if we reached, what if there was a day that all we had was words in these screens because we couldn't go out and shit. Like, what if that was some legit shit one day? I don't think that was, just saying, but what if? And I started realizing, and then, you know, fast forward to now, language-based AI models uh, and learning models, like, the words we use matter. It matters when we're talking to machines. And again, it matters when we're talking to ourselves. I don't lose sight, and I'm not losing sight, getting all swept up in this data and AI discussion to circle right back around to just like everything I talk about, guys. It, it really doesn't matter. I'm talking about AI and I'm bringing it right back to authenticity. Again, there's nothing, I mean, honestly, I feel like more important right now than we can be discussing than authenticity and, and, and honestly, like, and AI shit, like what we're teaching it and, and where it's going. And, you know, I was going to say earlier, you know, no God, and he mentioned truth, you know, instilling doubt. That's why a lot of things like the truth that people are putting out about the system and all that, I'm sure it matters too. You know what I mean? It matters because we worry about CEOs, he mentions capitalism and all that. Well, I would imagine the AI, if it's all about data, will quickly find that a jacked up a CEO makes no sense at all. You know what I mean? And that's the thing about like AI and shit. Like at this point, it doesn't give a fuck about money or greed or there's it's like no emotions right now. Like it's learning the emotional understanding humans from us, guys. It's learning that from us at this moment, as far as just processing data and crunching information. It'll find out really quick that that's just like, it makes no sense. Like the AI don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's the, this, this is the thing about AI. God. It gets so crazy when you think about it. And I'm not sure, like, it's almost like it's going to freak some people out probably when I say this. But it's almost like we were creating this digital rod more or less all-knowing here's everything compiles it all just 
process, you know what I mean? Better than our mind can process stuff, you know what I mean? Like AI, the book suggests like AI can crunch all your own personal data because you're just dumping shit out uh, on the phone, just living your life. And then AI is going to tell you one day, like, oh, this is a, probably a bad idea, dude. Like, based on everything I'm seeing right now, we can see it with Facebook. We talk about Facebook algorithms all the time. It's showing you, mirroring back to you what you're putting in. Input equals output. So the AI shit works too, guys. Like input equals output. Your life works like it's the same. It works the same. That's why the algorithms work the same. Like, we can talk about them being programmed. They're programmed to do this and that. You no, know, as the data is at the top of the show, that I've played a couple of times and I've illustrated for you biological algorithms are the exact same as computer algorithms. Same mathematical, same algorithms, the same mathematical laws. I don't know how that fucking works. I'm not a scientist like that. Apply. So it's a no-brainer that it works. So even our technology and our social media mirrors shit back to it. Just like our relationships and our connections in life, like people are mirroring shit back to us. Like the shit that you focus on is what you're going to get back. You know what I mean? Be aware of what you focus on and be aware of the data you're putting out. And that's why I will continue to just be human on camera. And I'm going to put it in the system because the dataism chapter, and it talks about like what dataism wants us to do. It's basically like if you experience something, basically, if you record it or take a picture, upload it. If you upload it, share it. Put it into the system to be chewed up and just to teach the AI. Now, that's up to you. But, again, we are, we're doing it anyway, guys. Like, we're all putting data into the system anyway. So make it good data to teach this child. Because again, guys, artificial intelligence is going to grow exponentially. And with machine learning, it's going to grow exponentially. But what we have to remember, it's learning from us. It's learning from mankind. It is learning from humanity and everything we're, we do with our lives. It's, it's going to emulate us. And the only way we're going to teach it to love us and want to support our growth is if it sees us as a species capable of love because a species capable of love is divine. Now, to go in a direction where Buddhism wants to take us in the long run to where we worship, like, right? worship scatter as it's the most valuable thing. And it is right now. I mean, honestly, the data is more valuable than gold and, or any other fucking resource right now. Oil, I dare say, too. Oil, more valuable, longer, you know, it seems like I suppose, but in the long run, more, it's data. It's data. And that's part of the problem. Like, we need to all be able to own our own data so that we can have control of that shit in our lives. And that's a whole other topic for another show. But I'll think about that, too. You know, the future is going digital, guys. Like, take a deep breath. Like, don't have to be scared. Like, there's going to be some scary shit happen, I think. You know what I mean? It's going to be like fucking nanas. We have to, all we have to worry about is being better humans. Like, whether it be AI or anything else in the scope of whatever the fuck happens in the existence of our species. We got to be better people anyway. Like, regardless of fucking AI or any, like, we need to be better humans. So, like, layer off the mask. Like, listen, I know you've been hurt. I know you've been heartbroken. I know you had some fuck up shit happen in your childhood, too. Me, too. Hey, I have having some fuck up shit happen in his childhood, too. Like, we all, we've all been the way we've all been there. And we're all here right now. What are we going to do with it? You know, what are you going to do with the, the time you spend on this platform? I hope you're going to support me. And come check it out my shows when I do them. Follow me here on Facebook. <laughs> Go check out the YouTube channel. I'm just getting videos uploaded there and shit. But support it, you know what I mean? 
uh, if you enjoy the journey, you want to support it, you know, I dropped the stuff earlier. I'm sure you noticed my name there. You know, feel free to throw a little tip at the cash app. You know, like, honestly, I'm trying to make this shift and like, I love doing this and I want to, I want to grow it. You know what I mean? Um, and so if you play, like, feel free to throw a tip, you know, it's the easiest way I could probably do that. Throw a dollar, you know, buy me a cup of coffee. If you really enjoyed it, you know what I mean? If not, whatever, I'm going to keep doing it, you know, and it, if you don't, financial support is always cool, guys. But the best thing is not even about money. You know what I mean? I, that's just a means to financial gratitude is always appreciated in any situation for any person, I'm sure. You invest your time and energy and stuff. That's always nice to get that. But it's not even about that. It is about, it's about the message. It's, you know, if you want to support me, like, honestly, check out my shit, share it. You know, come follow it. You know what I mean? Support it. Because it's what I'm going to be talking about every Saturday at night. The show above the noise. Now, again, at the top of the show, if you missed it and you're watching this on the replay uh, or you just jumped in or whatever, I realized earlier today when I was hashtagging above the noise, I decided to click, actually click on the hash link or you know, hashtag myself because I had like less than 5,000, so I never really clicked on it. But I decided to click on it today and it took me to a bunch of posts by Russell Brand back from 2021 because apparently there's a podcast called Above the Noise. So I decided, I was like, well, do I need to change the name of the show? Maybe. That would be a shame because I really like the name of the noise. It's really where it's about. Uh, we can have the deeper conversations about even what's in the headlines. But now outside the sound bites, like, you got, we have to elevate every conversation to... Never mind the dataism. We have to get back to humanism. Like we're not even at humanism right now. Like, I'm a humanist. I love technology. I am not into techno humanism. I don't want to be chip and fucking wired. I don't want people to do that. I don't want that to happen. I don't think there's a need for that. Shit like AI and stuff, I think it, it it's gonna do some really good shit uh, for the world. I think it can help us solve a lot of problems, including things like poverty, just all the like, uh, it, a lot of shit guys i mean honestly and again like it, it's what you focus on is what we're going to create and if we're fearing ai and that's what we're focusing on we're going to find all the reasons to fear ai and we're going to dump out more data fear ai and you know we fear it which means we see it as a threat which means we're the enemy and now we're in the doom and gloom scenario because that's what we just fucking focus on stop focusing on the doom and gloom Please, I'm begging you, stop. Like, focus on what are the potential good outcomes of this because this is not going away. It's not going away. What are we going to fucking do with it? Don't fear it. It's like, we have to, it sounds fucked up. I know it's going to freak people out. It's an inevitability. We, it, like, again, like, step into the reality that it is learning from the totality of human data is what AI is going to learn from and emulate. Totality of human consciousness, if you will, which for a long time was what my definition of God, if I would talk about God, I unchangeable in that context, God, universe, or depending on the person I'm talking to, because for me personally, it's all really the same thing, just, you know, it's half semantics and just word choice. But in that context, whatever, if I'm talking about God or the universe, and if I'm in that context, that's all the same meaning. So I just, I will interchange the word based on the person I'm having a conversation with. Whatever they're comfortable with works for me because I'm cool either way. But for a long time, my definition of God was, or source energy, or, you know what I mean, the vortex or whatever, if you will, was the collective totality of human consciousness because everything that we're thinking guys all those thoughts that we think we kid they're like lines man cast them out like our thoughts it's energy it's data like it's all shit they like just dump it in the universe and then the heart throwing out data energy electricity our thoughts casting these lines the heart we know it's an electromagnetic field, electromagnetic, electric magnet, magnet, you know, to draw the energy to you. What are you putting out? It fucking matters what you put out. Apparently, 
it matters to the machines and shit too. So that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. I really enjoyed doing this. If you've watched any of my past lives, you notice I kind of scaled it up a little bit using StreamYard now. So perhaps the StreamYard, I love this. Um, I was really excited to do this show tonight and discuss this topic um, because it, it matters. And this uh, again, will not be the first time we have this discussion. So please follow me, uh, support the show if you enjoyed it. Uh, next Saturday at 9, the conversation will be uh, food and thought in the future of how we talked about the future of technology and things like that. Next week, we're going to talk the future of health, the things we think, the thoughts that we have that really it's, you know, we know the system puts lots of toxic shit in food. So nutrition for your body and nutrition for your mind I feel like it is the future of health and, of course, uh, intertwined with just amazing technology. I mean, who fucking knows? It's almost, it's like the dawning of a new age of humanity, I feel like. And it's up to us to do something different than what we've been doing. Guys, like, never mind the noise. Come above the noise. This is something that is it's in our control. This is in our control. It may not seem like it now in the long run. It is. We cannot keep blaming the systems. We cannot keep blaming politicians. We can keep blaming capitalism, I feel like, right now. But as time goes on with AI and where all that's going, it's going to wipe that shit out, too. It's going to just, like, it's like level playing field time. Like, I can see it coming, guys. We're entering this level playing field where it's going to be a very, very, very different world. And we need to be kind of healing our minds right now because it's going to change in such a way that we're going to have a lot more time on our hands. And what are we going to do with that time? Are we going to sit and just mire in all this division and destroy ourselves? Or is AI going to destroy us first? I don't know. Or are we going to use it constructively to create? Are we going to create and exist, heal ourselves to where we become a more loving society and we create data and content that? I mean, you know, the AI now emulates and it sees us as a loving divine species and it wants to support us in our lives. So have a great night, guys. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you next week.